Our first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 18 to 20. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me they devised their schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Our second reading is from the book of James, chapter 3, and continuing into chapter 4. Uh, and again, uh, as we've been hearing over the last number of weeks, we get some very uh, concrete and maybe no holes barred advice for, I don't know, advice is the wrong word, direction for how we should live our lives as God's people. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and you do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9, and it will serve as the basis for our meditation today. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, 
Over the last few weeks, as I mentioned at the beginning of the readings, we've been reading from the book of James uh, and also from the Gospel of Mark. And there's a sort of a common thread that's been running through. And if you are here last week, you remember that an awful lot of James, 43%, talks about what we say or, or speech or the language we use. Uh, it's, it's very practical things for the Christian life, but it's not always easy things to hear. And our reading for today is another one of those things that's not really easy to hear, is it? Um, whether it was the book of James talking about humbling ourselves before God, or in Mark where the disciples were like trying to figure out who was going to be the, the most important among the 12 of them, these readings make us struggle a little bit. So Jesus and his disciples were walking down the road. Jesus was teaching them and, and telling, him, telling them what he was basically all about, right? I mean, Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets, to live a perfect life, but then he came to suffer and die in our place so we could have forgiveness, and he said it pretty plainly, didn't he? Like, he will be killed, and after three days, he will rise again. And so... He's talking very clearly, very plainly to the disciples, but they've got something else on their mind. And I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation with someone, uh, and maybe you could tell by the look on their face, or maybe they could tell by the look on your face and, and by what came next. And this is what I mean. Someone's talking to you and telling you about their day at work. You know, and they're, they're talking, and it's like, oh, I gotta tell them about my day at work. Right? And so you're just, like, you're just waiting for them to finish talking. And so you're not really listening. And, and then when they're done, you just kind of go off on this tangent that, I mean, it's, it's sort of connected because it brought it to your mind. But it kind of shows that either you weren't listening or they weren't listening because you just kind of, you know, you, you crossed in two different directions. That, I think that's kind of what was going on with Jesus and his disciples. He was talking about service. He was talking about Suffering, his service, his suffering, his death. And right away then, the disciples are like, oh yeah, and which one of us is going to be the greatest? Right? It's like two ships that pass each other and they almost like they don't recognize that each other are there. They, they didn't get the message. Uh, they were just waiting for Jesus to finish talking so they could have their big discussion and figure out who's going to come up as top dog in the group. What's interesting is when Jesus says to them, so what were you talking about on the road? They're like, nothing, <laughs> right? They knew what they were talking about. Deep down, they knew what they were talking about when seen through the eyes of Jesus wasn't right. And so they're like, nothing. We're gonna pretend it didn't happen. I had that exact same thing happen to me when I was a kid. And so, for those of you who are parents, just imagine you've got your... I must have been about eight years old at the time. I was reading a book about a, a young boy who goes to live in the mountains, right? And survive on his own, and he traps animals, and he builds... He hollows out a tree and lives inside the tree with his pet... I think he had a falcon. And, I mean, it was just... Oh, it was such a cool book. And, and so I decided, even though we lived in the city of Saskatoon that it would be a good idea to try and get some of these skills. And so I pulled out my Boy Scout book, and there was a way you could build a trap where you had a couple pieces of wood that would hook into each other, right, and the snare tied to it. So when the animal went through, it unhooked, up they went, and there's dinner. Uh, except we didn't really have any trees around that I could cut branches off of. So I got a couple of clothespins from the basement. And I got Dad's little pocket knife, and I don't know if you realize it, clothespins back in the old days were made out of oak, I think, or maple, or like something really, really hard. So I'm trying to cut this notch so I can make my trap, and all of a sudden the knife slipped. And I'm just looking, uh, across these two knuckles, I still have the scar from it. I just like, with this little knife, and I'm like, oh no. So I went into the bathroom, and I'm, you know, I'm rinsing my hand in the water, and it's bleeding pretty good. I, there's some veins close to the top. I must have hit them. And so there's, like, there's blood on the floor. There's blood all over the sink. My dad comes in and says to me, what happened? My response, 
Nothing. I mean, obviously something had happened, right? But I didn't want to admit it. I, even when the evidence was like splattered, splattered all over the place. And for us, we know about Jesus as our savior, as the servant, right? Who came in humility to serve us. We know what his life was about. We, we've heard the story of how Jesus took a little child and said, whoever wants to be the greatest must be the least. But how often do we truly live our lives that way? I mean, sometimes we do pretty good, absolutely. But sometimes we don't. And you know, in our world right now, I think we have a huge problem with this. I think it's been coming probably for years and years. And it's one of those things that's been slowly slipping into society. And so we, we can get pulled into it even without realizing it. And I don't know if you've noticed, but in the last little while, everybody's talking about their rights. Have you seen that on TV or heard it on the radio or read it in the newspaper? It's like... This is my right. This is my right. This is my right. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you're like on the right or on the left. Everybody's got their rights. And do you know whose rights are right? Mine. Right? And everybody says that, don't they? And again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, like whatever the right is, doesn't matter. But it's, these are my rights. You know, I have a constitutional right to this. I have a, I have a right to that. A few years ago, I think one of the people in government got in trouble because he was entitled to his entitlements. Do you remember that? Uh, and, and so the, the point was, I mean, he was kind of shady with what he was doing, but he was entitled to it. So even if it wasn't completely right, I mean, it's, you know, it's my right. I'm entitled to it, and so I can do it. Just this last week, uh, I, I read a story about a little seven-year-old girl who got her hair cut in school. Did you happen to see that one? Yeah, this cute little girl, curly blonde hair, and I don't know why, the, the story didn't say, teacher cut her hair. And so when she went home, her dad took her to the hairdresser to fix it, uh, and then the next day she went back and the teacher, or a teacher, fixed it again. Now, I'm not defending what the teacher did, right? Because I'd be unhappy if someone was cutting my kid's hair, but dad is suing for a million dollars, because, and here this, this, this wraps up so nicely, because it violated her constitutional rights. Now, I'm not sure if that's the right to have blonde hair, curly hair, or your hair cut the way you want. Like, which, con I mean, you know, sue for bad haircut. Sue because the child wasn't happy. Sue for, but no, it's, it's, it's right up there, right? Constitutional rights. And they'll probably get 125000 out of the deal and be happy. Everybody's focused, I think, in our world today on rights. And Jesus comes to us and he says, you want to be the greatest? You want to have the most rights? You have the right to be like me. Through faith, I've given you, right? I've made you a new person. I've given you a new heart, you're a new creation, and you don't have to be self-absorbed and selfish and always and only looking out for yourself. You can look out for those around you because the people who are truly great are the ones who are the servants of all. Do you have someone in your life who's like that? Maybe a mom or a, a grandma? An aunt who, like, they're always looking out for everyone else, right? And in this situation, with this uh, example, it probably has to do with food, right? I mean, they cook for everyone. They eat last. If there's not enough, they don't eat. Uh, but whoever that person is, I mean, that, that person has, has made an impact in your life, right? They've been an example to you. Well, Jesus came not just to be an example for us. He came to truly serve us. I mean, you want to talk about someone who had no rights. He was falsely accused when he had done nothing wrong. He was sentenced to death in a kangaroo court 
And like the song says, he could have called down 10,000 angels, right? And just like obliterated everyone and everything. But he put his rights aside to serve us. To give us forgiveness. To pay the penalty that by rights we should be paying. So that we could be his children. So that we could know peace in our lives because we're loved by our Lord and we know that through forgiveness we have the promise of eternal life in heaven and that nothing can take that away from us. And when we have someone like God who has our back, you know what? Then we can step out in faith and serve others. And maybe when we do, perhaps we'll be taken advantage of. I mean, that happens when you're nice to people sometimes, right? But, but we're not called to worry about that. We're called to worry about them. We're called to serve them, to make a difference in their lives. And hopefully as they see us serving, they will turn and see Jesus who came to serve us all. May God enable you to serve freely, willingly, those around you, to be like Christ for them in thanksgiving for all Christ has given to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we continue with the Nicene Creed, we have the joy of receiving some new members. So Bud and Myrna, could you come forward, please? Now, Bud and Myrna moved moved here from Surrey. Uh, they were members at Faith Lutheran Church there. And if you haven't heard, uh, they've known Rico and Bev for decades, and they're good friends. Yeah, come right here. Uh, and so they've moved to the island now and are joining our congregation. Uh, and also, Colin and Judith Liskey are also joining. Uh, he was the pastor down in Nanaimo before he retired. Uh, they retired up here to be closer to family. As you know, Judith uh, broke her hip and also suffers with pretty significant dementia. And so uh, she's in hospital, and Colin, Colin is there with her just about all day, every day. So they couldn't be here today, but we're also including them in the reception of members. Dear friends in Christ, the members of our congregation are happy that you are to become a part of our Christian fellowship. Our Lord bids us to confess him before men, with the promise that he will then confess us before his Father in heaven. That we may rejoice in your confession, I now ask you in the presence of God in this congregation, do you accept and confess that the teachings of the Evangelical Lutheran Church are faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. I do. As a member of this church, do you intend to continue in the confession of this church? Attend public worship, Make diligent use of the means of grace and, excuse me, and lead a righteous and godly life. If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. I do so intend with the help of God. Will you support the work of our gracious Lord, the work that he has given this congregation, with your prayers, time, treasure, and talents? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Upon this, your promise, I, in the name of this congregation, extend to you the right hand of fellowship and love, and acknowledge you as members of our church to participate in all the blessings of salvation which God has given to us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now would you please stand as we join together to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have a few prayer requests today. Uh, the first one is for Julie's uh, ex-husband's sister, uh, Patty, or, sorry, Kathy Jo. Uh, they are, are still very close, and she is in hospital in Calgary with COVID. She was doing very poorly. One lung had collapsed. Uh, but she is starting to improve, so I want to pray for her. Uh, continue to pray for Val as she does physical therapy down in Nanaimo. For Judith Liskey in hospital here in town. For the election that's going to take place tomorrow. Uh, prayer of thanksgiving on behalf of Kathy, who had successful eye surgery this last week. Uh, and we also want to pray for uh, Lawrence Korfman. He'll be going for eye surgery this week. Uh, and Eva, I'm thinking Oma, Eva will be going for a CT scan. But are there any other prayer requests for today? Okay, let's bow our heads as we continue in prayer. We thank you, dear Lord, for being with Kathy Jo and that she is beginning to do better. We pray that you'd continue to be with her and all of those who are hospitalized with COVID, that you would bless them and strengthen and heal them in the care that they're receiving, that you would protect all of us from infection and especially from serious illness. We pray that you would continue to give strength and endurance to the doctors and nurses and all the people in the hospitals who are caring for us, we think this has been going on for a long time for them. I'm sure it seems much longer. We thank you for their service and pray that you would strengthen them and keep them strong and healthy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you continue to be with Val in her recovery. We pray that you would grant her strength and health, that she'd very soon be able to come home. Be with her family as they continue to uh, care for her and worry about her and and just look after all the things that need to be done Lord in your mercy Amen. Hear our prayer We ask that you would be with Judith as she's in hospital. We pray for healing and strength for her uh, endurance for Colin and we ask Lord that uh, a place would be open for Judith soon in extended care where she can get out of the hospital into a, a more home-like setting. Be with her whole family and give them peace at this time. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for being with Kathy this past week and that her eye surgery went so well. Continue to be with her and grant her healing. We pray that uh, everything would heal up well and that uh, her vision would be good. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. We pray for Papa, as he'll be going for eye surgery this week, that you would watch over and keep him safe, that you would bless him in the care that he's receiving and the procedure they're doing. And Lord, we ask that he would also have a quick and complete recovery. We ask that you be with Oma as she goes for a CT scan this week, that it would give answers to the doctors so that they can chart a course forward in their care for her. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, who's taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We continue now with our closing song.
Jesus was born.